Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. Today we're going to build this kitchen secretary made out of mahogany. It has adjustable shelves at the top with plenty of room for the cookbooks and the kitchen TV. This raised panel door flips down to create a writing surface and we have some cubby holes to organize your paperwork. It's meant to hang from the wall so you can put your chair or stool underneath it. I'll show you how to build it today right here in the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Here's some of the material I'm going to need to build today's project. Some three-quarter inch thick solid mahogany, nice and clear, and some three-quarter inch thick mahogany veneer plywood. Here's one sheet, and I have another one set up here on the workbench. If you'd like to build the secretary, a measure drawing is available with the materials list, and you'll hear more about that before the program ends. The first thing I want to do is reduce the size of the sheet so it's easier to handle. And one way to do that is to use a circular saw. I've set up a straight edge clamp to guide the saw, and I've installed a piece of wood underneath to hold it above my workbench so I won't damage the bench. But before we use any power tools, let's take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. With the pieces ripped to the correct width, now I'm ready to cut them to length. I've checked the end for square and it's good. Now I'm going to mark the length and I'm going to use my panel cutting jig to make the cut. It makes it easy to hold these large pieces and they'll come out perfectly square every time. This is the first of a couple dados that I have to put into each side panel to receive the fixed shelves. To make that dado, I've set up the stack dado head cutter in my table saw. The width matches the thickness of the plywood. I've set the fence an inch and a half away, and the height is a quarter inch. And that takes care of the groove for the shelf above the desk compartment. Now there's a rabbit to receive the top of the secretary. You'll notice that I've added a sacrificial strip to my fence so that when I brought it over to the blade, the cutter wouldn't hit the metal. After raising the height of the dado head to 3 eighths of an inch, but leaving the fence in the same position, I've run a rabbit to receive a 3 quarter inch plywood back. With one of the side pieces clamped in the workbench, I'm ready to make some holes for the adjustable shelf pins. I'm using this jig. There's a series of small holes into which a pin goes that sets the distance from the edge of the sheet to the center of the holes. And then there are holes one inch on center, which will guide my router. Now I slide the piece and the pin against the edge of the sheet and lock it down with these clamps. The router is set up with a collar that fits exactly into the larger holes. When I plunge the router down, the quarter inch router bit will drill the hole for the pin. All the holes will be equally spaced and in a line. Okay, that's perfect. Now we'll make a series of holes down the back edge of the cabinet.
Now I'm ready for a little assembly and put some glue in the dado and then set the shelves in place. Now before I can put the other side on, I have to lose these clamps. So I'm driving a few four penny finish nails to hold it together while the glue sets. Well after a little break for lunch, I was able to remove the clamps and now I'm gonna set the other side on, clamp it and nail it in the same manner. Well, while these set for a few minutes, let's put the top on. Well, now for the back. And I've put a good amount of glue in that rabbit joint, because after all, the entire weight of this cabinet is going to be hanging off the back. And once it's set in place, I'll nail it off with some four penny finish nails. I was searching around in our sample shop and I found this raised panel door so I could show you the construction details in making one. There is a raised panel that fits between rails and styles. And if I pull this apart, you can see that there is a groove into which the panel will sit and then there's this quarter round detail. The same thing has to be done to the inside edge of the rail piece. I'll mill that detail in the rails and styles using this router bit that I've set up in my router table. It'll cut the groove and it'll mill the quarter round all in one pass. Let's take another look at our sample. In the rails, I need to make a corresponding cope so that when I put the pieces together, I have a nice tight joint and a good place to glue the joint together. When I make that pass, the molded edge is going to be going through the cutter last. That means I could get tear out. In order to minimize that, I've taken a scrap, run a tenon on the edge of the piece so that I can slip it into the rail therefore minimizing tear out when I run it through. Well now I'm ready to make the raised panels. I've got some three quarter inch solid stock cut to the right size. I've installed my panel raising bit in the router table and I'm going to have to make a couple passes but the objective is to get the tongue to match the groove that I've made in the rails and styles. made an additional adjustment to the cutter, raising it up so that the thickness of the edge will fit in our groove perfectly. Well, the panels turned out pretty well, but before I put any glue to this assembly, I like to do a dry fit of all the pieces. Now, the tongue on the panel is just snug enough so that I can slide it in easily. And then I can bring the other style over. And once again, we can see how this cope joint meets the groove. Now, they've been making doors like this for a long time. It's a nice, clean, tight joint, and it's strong. And the middle fits together good. And up here at the top of the panel, 
that pulled together nicely, so I'd say all the parts fit pretty well. Now I'll break it down, put some glue on the joints, and clamp it up. Good morning. We're going to get started today making another raised panel. This one is going to be for the desk front. When it's closed, it's going to conceal the cubby compartments. When it's open, it becomes the writing surface. Now, the rails and styles for that panel were made using the same methods that I showed you earlier. But the panel is a little different. On the back side, I want a flush writing surface. So instead of starting with a piece of 3 quarter inch stock, I'm starting with a piece of 1 inch stock. And the first step is to make a rabbit around the back side using a 3 8 inch rabbiting bit in my router. Okay, now we'll go back to the router table and raise the face. To assemble these raised panels, it's just a matter of putting some glue on the tenons and in the grooves. There's plenty of surface area here, so it's a very strong joint. You'll slip the pieces together and then clamp them. Now for the panel, that gets slipped into the grooves with no glue. I want that to float. Now a little more glue on the tenons, on the end styles, and we'll clamp that up. One more clamp here, and we'll set this aside to dry and start working on the face frame. Perhaps you noticed on the finished piece that the corners of the face frame styles had this bead. To make that bead, I'm using a beading bit in the router table. When you mill a bead, it's important to keep the stock in position, otherwise the bead will be ruined. You need two feather boards, one to keep the stock against the fence, one to keep the stock on the table. I'll run the piece through on edge first, then I'll rearrange the feather boards and run it through on the flat to give me the bead. For the second feather board setup, I push the feather board against the stock when it's sitting flat on the table and clamp it in place. Then I'll take a piece of scrap stock that's the same thickness and set the second feather board. Then I'll be ready to run the stock through. Well, now I'm ready to attach the side panels to the carcass. I've clamped them to the side, flush at the front. I've pre-drilled some holes with a counter bore. I'm using some one and a quarter inch screws to attach the panel. And then I'll fill in the counter bores with some plugs. The easiest way to make the plugs for those counter bores is to use a drill press and a plug cutting bit. The bit has a hole in the center and it cuts out the plug and then you just pop it out with a screwdriver. I have a little adapter that goes on the end of my glue bottle that makes it easy to put the glue in the counter bore. You just set the plug in position getting it started and then drive it in and 
trim off the excess with the flush cutting saw. Now I'm ready to put on the face frame styles. Some glue on the side panel and on the back edge of the style. And I'm simply going to use the glue and some brads to hold it all together. A butt joint, no biscuits, no other fasteners. Now I will use a biscuit where this top rail meets the style because there's no backing behind it. The biscuit with the glue will make a real strong joint. Now here I'm getting ready to mortise for the hinges which will attach that front to the carcass. I'm using this flap hinge and I need to drill a hole 35 millimeters in diameter both in the carcass and in the door. I'll drill it by hand here in the carcass. I'll use the drill press for the door. That's good. The individual pieces of the hinge is secured to the door and the cabinet with these small screws. They also have adjustment features to align the door. Now I'll just slip the halves together, tighten down the large screw, and make a few fine adjustments. Okay, now we can finish the face frame. Well now for a little decorative treatment at the top of our secretary. A lot of hardwood outlets, including mine, now carry stock moldings in a variety of species of wood. So I didn't have to make this molding. They had this nice mahogany crown, which I'm installing right at the top of our cabinet. Just miter the corners, nail it in place. To give some additional support to the top edge of this molding, I rip some strips at a 39 degree angle. I'm just applying a little bit of glue and the glue will be enough to hold them in there. Normally I don't put any hardware on at this point. I wait until the piece is stained or finished, but as you can see it's a little difficult to open the desk front, so we'll put it on now. Okay, that's better. For the last few minutes, I've been making some rabbits and dados in some half inch thick pieces of mahogany. And they're going to become the cubby hole compartment that's going to go behind the desktop. Got a few more dados to make, and then we'll be able to put it together.
Well, let's see if we can slide the finished assembly in. It's a snug fit. Okay, and that just gets centered in the back. Now, I do need some pieces of hardware to hold the desktop 90 degrees to the face of the cabinet. And I picked these up at my local woodworker's store. But the first thing I have to do is add a piece to the inside where the hardware is going to attach to the carcass. A little bit of glue, it's a one and a half inch wide piece. And I'll just attach it with some one and a quarter inch brads. Now, if you want to avoid stripping these soft brass screws, it's absolutely necessary that you pre-drill. Let's try that. Okay, that's going to work good. Now let's get to making some shelves. The shelves are made out of three-quarter inch thick plywood. And to cover up the exposed edge, I've made some solid mahogany strips have that little bead detail at the bottom edge. I'm just attaching them with some glue and one and a half inch brads. Okay, well that just about takes care of it for the woodworking. A little bit of final sanding and this will be ready for the finishing room. And I think I better take care of that squeak. For the finish on our kitchen secretary, I'm using an oil. I apply a coat by flooding it on with a brush, and I let it sit for five to ten minutes, and then I'm able to take a clean rag and wipe off any of the excess. Now, I'll let that dry for about 24 hours and then repeat the process. The more coats that I put on, the richer the wood will look and the better protection it'll have. All right, there it is with three coats of Danish oil, which should be plenty to protect the wood. Now all I have to do is install it in the kitchen. There'll be plenty of room for storage of the cookbooks, a place to file the recipes, and even a place to make out the menu. This was a good project.